Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm back, I'm back doing videos, yes. And I'm in my new location, my temporary office here in Sydney, Australia. You can see my desk behind me. You can see my Mac and a couple of books and I've got my notes here, which I've been busy, you know, putting together over the last couple of days. I felt really compelled to study the chart of Bill Gates. I don't know, it just popped up into my mind that I should really do a video about this. So I thought, okay, I'll do it, fantastic. I'm gonna put the charts up here somewhere on the screen so that you can see them as well and follow along as I go. But for those of you who have your own Vedic Astrology software and you wanna follow along on your screen, I'm using the date 28th October, 1955 and that's 9.15 p.m. Seattle, Washington, USA. So that's the information that I'm using. So how about we get stuck into these notes? I've written everything out this time because I want this video to be really efficient. We're gonna be moving through a lot of information here. So I've got it all written down. So today I wanted to explore Bill Gates's transits a little bit right at the start and ask Bill a rather controversial question, ask him, do you have a vaccine for Saturn's wrath? Now, please let me know if you do. Um, <laughs> I think if anyone's going to need one, it might be Bill Gates who needs one, okay? So Saturn will be 12th from his moon on 29th April 2022. This is the start of his Sardisati period, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, those of us who know Vedic astrology, we know Sardisati is a seven and a half year period where Saturn passes over your moon. It's a very trying and testing time. It can elevate you, it can propel you to heights, um, but it can be a really rotten time for anyone who is a liar um, or anyone who thinks that they're God. Okay, so <laughs> really bad time for those kind of people. Uh, in this video, I also want to analyze Bill's chart a bit and answer the question, would I trust my health to this man? I can tell you right now, the short answer that, to that question is no, uh, I, I wouldn't trust my health to this man. And that's based on a lot of different things, okay? That's not just based on the astrology, that's based on my research, it's based on rational faculties like logic, analysis, my intuition, my opinion, there's a lot going into what I think here, okay? I'm not coming to this chart blind. I'm not coming to this chart uncolored by other perceptions, right? So what's the research that I've done? In 1995, I read his biography. Uh, I've since kept up with his progress via documentaries and the news in general. Um, I'm a real tech person. Uh, my first job out of university was as an Accenture consultant. I would implement Siebel systems and Oracle databases for Fortune 500 companies. And, you know, um, it was a very technical kind of job. I used to like it at that time. And I, I mean, I've always followed tech and, and the creativity of that industry is something that really fascinates me. Um, in recent times, in terms of research, I've been watching Bill Gates on CNN through things like YouTube. I've been watching him being interviewed by Stephen Colbert, which is a really fascinating interview. Um, and I've also seen that he's been discussed by various voices in alternative media. There's a lot of discussion going on about him right now, and it's been so fascinating to hear what all different types of people have to say. So... I've definitely been doing some pretty broad research. In terms of opinion, what kind of opinion do I have without astrology? Let's have a look at that. So I look at a person's legacy. What have they left behind? What are they leaving behind for humanity? And he's not finished yet. So I know that he's still, you know, got a lot to do um, on this earth. But if we have a look at, say, for example, the legacy of Microsoft, to me, it's not... Um, it's not a brilliant legacy. A lot of the software products that he created were mediocre, sometimes mediocre at best. Um, his company was neither original or innovative. Again, this is my personal opinion. Um, unlike, say, for example, the, Zero, the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, Xerox Park, that developed the graphical user interface. We've got Apple. I find Apple to be hugely innovative. Um, Adobe has been an amazing company. Lotus, Sun Microsystems, Mozilla, just to name a few. There are lots of really great technology innovators 
out there. Um, and I, yeah, I, I just can't list Microsoft w within that group, unfortunately. But let's move on from my opinion and let's get into the astrology. Okay, so now Sade Sate begins April 2022. For seven and a half years, Saturn is going to test the weak links in the public and work side of Bill's life. So the houses affected are ninth house, 10th house and 11th house. Last time Bill Gates was in Sade Sate, he was in court over antitrust allegations regarding Internet Explorer, focusing on an abuse of monopolistic power. The Federal Trade Commission began its investigation in 1992. So that's when things began. His Sade started in 1993 and it ended in 2000. Now, what's really interesting here is that Sade Sate ran for, so Sade ran from 1993 to 2000, but the court case, most importantly, ran over that entire time, right? The court case ended in June 2000. So that's really fascinating. So for that entire time, he was in court. Um, the suit really officially began in May 1998, but you can imagine if they start investigating him in 1992, that's really when things kicked off. And May 1998 is when he officially had to go to court, but I would imagine that there would be a lot behind the scenes that would happen before it gets to that court phase. Um, so May 1998, that's his third phase of Sade Sati. Right, what happened in the case? Well, in June 2000, when Sade Sati ended, a judge ordered Microsoft be broken up in two parts, which I think is a pretty amazing result for that time. And I do remember following the case, uh, I think was I, I was in university at that time, and um, yeah, I remember it being really interesting how hard he was fighting. And it, another really interesting thing, when you read up notes on the case, the judge basically shakes his head and laughs it's so many times. And if you want to see that recently, watch Stephen Colbert interview Bill Gates, because there's one point towards the end where, where um, Stephen Colbert shakes his head and laughs in the same way, as if to say, what are you doing? It's a really good bit of body language. But anyway, let's go to this now. Would I trust my health? To this man no okay why and then we're going to get into some astrology here his chart reminds me of the chart of fred goodwin who is a famous city banker who was stripped of all his assets due to fraud he had a really tough sade sate it's a really interesting case because before he entered sade sate he has a, you have a two and a half year period where saturn helps you a lot during that period he made his bank a lot of money and then over the course of Sade Sate, he was stripped of everything. He was stripped of his assets, his money, his knighthood, everything went because what he was doing was wrong, right? So, and that's the thing. I, I don't know if these people are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I don't know that. Saturn knows, okay? Saturn knows. So, but Fred Goodwin, why are the two charts really similar? The two charts are really similar. Both men have charts filled with youngish sort of planets by degree. Um, they're all, the planets are from Aries to Scorpio. There's no, or not much mature energies. We don't have sort of, and what I'd wanna see is some proper Capricorn Aquarius type energies. Bill Gates has an exalted Saturn, but it's in Libra. Um, and house wise, it's also, I think in the fifth house, isn't it? So, I mean, it's not, the maturity is lacking here, um, is, is what I'm seeing, the spiritual maturity, okay? So what, what do I mean by that? I'm, I'm kind of looking at things like moksha energy. There's little moksha energy. There's no healer nakshatras present. Uh, there's no strong ketu energy, right? Ketu is in the 12th house, okay, that's something. Uh, but it's in the material sign of Taurus, so it's not enough, right? And um, it's really interesting. I've been studying the chart of Jonas Salk who is a famous virologist who came up with the Pluto, uh, Pluto vaccine, polio vaccine. <laughs> they sound similar, don't they? Pluto, polio. Anyway, Jonas Salk is a man I would trust with uh, my health, right? Um, he's got some of that lovely Aquarian energy. Certain things that I would want to see are there, right? But it's, I'm not seeing it here um, in Bill Gates's chart. Uh, Let's have a look here. He's got a moksha moon. Okay, fine. But you can see he's just stepped out. 
this moon, that is, has just stepped out of what would otherwise be a Karl Sarpa yoga. He's basically got Karl Sarpa yoga in his chart, right? The moon is just, you know, the moon kind of intermittently breaks it um, for a day or two or whatever it is. But, you know, he's basically got Karl Sarpa yoga, which is in the sky right now. We've also got a big Jupiter-Pluto conjunction uh, in the sky right now as well. And this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction is also what Bill Gates has. This is the conjunction, I believe, um, that has made him very, very rich. It's one of the things, anyway, that's made him very, very rich. Um, yeah, it's really interesting that he's famous right now. There are some things happening in the sky that are happening in his chart. It kind of makes sense that he's, he's quite prominent right now. Um, the other thing is that he's prominent right now is because Saturn is 11th from his moon. So Saturn is supporting whatever endeavors he's got going on right now, okay? Uh, and that's really interesting. That's like Fred Goodwin. Fred Goodwin, Saturn helped him make all that money. And it's really, this is a really interesting point. I just want to check 13 minutes. I'll quickly go into this. I thought about this concept of evil and that why is evil allowed to happen on this earth? And you think about it, the planets almost, they have to allow you to carry it out. Right? So people will have evil thoughts, but they may not act on it. So they'll be dealt differently, dealt, dealt with differently. But if you actually carry it through, oh, well, now the planets can do something. You know, now the planets can, can, uh, can sort you out, <laughs> basically, right? You, but you have to be allowed to do it. Otherwise, there's no point of being here. There's no game, right? There's no game of life. So you have to be allowed to do things and it doesn't mean that all of your plans will succeed your plans will be foiled before they get too bad that's another thing that i firmly believe the divine has divine is looking out for everybody right so we don't have to worry too much but yeah it's really interesting so this fred goodwin guy when saturn was 11th from his moon he was able to carry out all these different things and then he definitely got punished so i mean because he actually was doing the wrong thing. I don't know about Bill Gates. I don't know what his intentions are, or, but we're, well, we're going to get into that a little bit more. Uh, so anyway, Bill Gates may well be on a winning streak until April 2022. However, from his ascendant, it is placed eighth from uh, the ascendant position. That's true. So there may be some transformational moments even now in the lead up to April 2022 but I, I largely believe I think I think he's gonna have a good run until April 2022 after that I'm not so sure right that could be a challenging time that could that entire time he could be spending it in court again right um, so debilitated son <clears throat> this is a big reason for me to lack trust when you look at this um, so the debilitated son and the scientist combination of Mars and Mercury You've got something that doesn't make me comfortable at all. You've got a scientific man, but more importantly, this is a godless man. This is a man with no God, right? I don't like that. I, that's, that doesn't work for me. The concept of God, for me, is not a religious thing. It's not a man with a beard on a cloud. It, it's none of that. It, it's that all is one. That's God for me. So, yeah. Uh, the debilitated sun is an issue here in this particular chart. It's really interesting. Jonas Salk, brilliant virologist who came up with the polio vaccine, he's also got a debilitated sun, but he's got other things saving the day. And we'll look at that another time. Now, we've got so debilitated lord of the third house plus Rahu in the sixth governed by Scorpio. Let's take a look at this. So lord of the sixth house... Where are we? So Lord of the Sixth House, Mars is in the fourth house of comfort and is frustrated to be there with Mercury as his master. Yeah, this Mars is interesting. Um, it's a frustrated Mars. And you look at that frustrated Mars, Mars is the masculine side of a man. You look at debilitated sun, that's a very masculine power as well. Both of these are not comfortable here. You've got the boy genius Mercury, very, very happy being a boy genius, but his masculine side is not happy, right? Let me tell you, it's not happy, it's frustrated, could be angry. Um, 
The other thing about debilitated Lord of the third house and Rahu in the sixth governed by Scorpio, so he's treating communicable diseases. Okay, that's fascinating. I mean, that just couldn't be more perfect. Of all the diseases, of all the things to tackle, he chooses communicable diseases. So, and that these are the diseases that, you know, communication, we talk to each other and, and these viruses can spread, right? Um, third and sixth houses. So third house communication, sixth house disease. Fascinating. Now we've got Jupiter and Pluto in the third house. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction because it's really interesting as well. I think it's one of the factors that's making him um, ultra wealthy, right? Uh, it's extremes, right? So, you know, Jupiter expansion, Pluto extreme. Who does he want to treat? This is the third house here, right? So that's where the people are. People are in third house. Uh, masses are in seventh house. Masses again are in eleventh house. The people are all here. So who does he want to treat? He wants to treat everyone in the world. Jupiter, Pluto, right? The other thing about Jupiter, Pluto, and I think I wrote that here, yeah, extreme intelligence. So on the one hand, you know, this person can be extremely intelligent, sure. But equally, if they're going to be stupid, it will be extremely stupid. And that's a little bit like a Rahu, Jupiter conjunction. And I've seen this, I've seen Rahu, Jupiter can be Yes, it can be extremely wise, it can be extremely intelligent, it can be, but when it's stupid, it's extremely stupid. I've definitely seen that. So, I mean, you know, there's that combination there. Let's take a look at another thing. Let's take a look at his Saturn placement. So, often Saturn indicates what you're afraid of, right? Um, Libra, the masses, in the fifth house of procreation right that's where the babies come from fifth house so we've got saturn is exalted here um saturn is very strong right exalted it's 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 in its best power best ability to act and if saturn is ex is afraid and he's exalted he's extremely afraid and able to act on that right so saturn is exalted it can be said that he is very afraid of overpopulation which is true because that is really um, the agenda behind making people healthy. He says that when you make people healthy, then they have less babies. Okay, so that's where the depopulation comes from in his speech, right? So Saturn uh, being so strong feels that this Saturn feels he can do something about this. He feels, yeah, I can do something about this. I can sort this out. I can sort out this whole problem. Now, what have we got in that house as well? We've got a debilitated sun. Debilitated son shows that there's no God. This is the godless man. There's no God that's got it all in hand. If the son was stronger, would he think it's not just up to me? That's what I wonder. Um, that there's, there, there are other forces in life. I'm not it. I'm not here to decide who be born, who shouldn't be born, all these kind of things. It's really fascinating. Let's take a look at Rahu. Uh, in each one of these, I could just talk for ages, but I want to I cut through all this. So what are we doing here? 20 minutes, oh God. Rahu is very close to Venus. Venus is also the Lord of Ketu, the Ketu house. Um, this can indicate addiction. Rahu, Venus can indicate addiction, right? So while Venus is not in the same house as Rahu, it's close enough. And anyway, it's the Lord of the opposing house. There's a bit of, um, there's a bit of this. And this can indicate addiction, right? Um, we have Rahu in Scorpio. What's Scorpio? That's other people's money, right? Fascinating. So a career where this person invests other people's money in health-related projects is really, it's a great career, okay? So, you know, I, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with giving money to that. But if he's calling the shots on health, and if he's calling himself a health expert, and if he's designing the strategy, and if he's telling hospitals what to do, now we have some big problems with that. That's kind of, that's Rahu gone out of control there. Um, Rahu in the sixth house is good for winning, um, but I would say that Rahu in the sixth house would, would also cut corners on quality. That is for sure, I think. Um, debilitated son, the person may think that their intentions are noble, but they may not be right? 
um, we have blind spots in our chart and that's one of the things that I coach people through. I coach people, okay, you've got a bit of a blind spot here, um, you know, and it, it needs awareness and it needs um, time and work and coaching and all that kind of thing. And I wonder, has he done self-development, personal development work? I'm not sure. Because, you know, he's the richest man. He can think, well, I'm right. Everything I do is right. I'm the most successful. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. So anyway, let's have a look at this. He's, he's treating disease with what? A scientific and godless worldview as indicated by the following. Mercury and the sun, as I've talked about. Rahu the rogue is in the mix here. We've got a frustrated Mars in the fourth house. Um, you know, a masculine side that, that is diminished or frustrated that could be angry. Uh, it's really interesting. So I, I'm, my conclusion here is this is not a good chart for a health expert. This is a great chart for someone who wants to finance health projects um, and fight legal battles. Uh, but mm, this is not, uh, I, I wouldn't trust him to actually, you know, inject me with something, say, for example, right? Uh, I've got a lot more to say, but I'm going to leave it there for now. So we're just about at the end of the video. 24 minutes is going to cut out, but stay tuned. I am going to look at Jonas Salk, who is the guy who invented the polio vaccine. And um, he's a lovely man. He also has a debilitated son, but he's got some other saving grace type qualities in his chart that make me trust him. So stay tuned for that. It might be in the master series. It might be a video like this. I haven't decided yet. But thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Just before this video ends, I wanted to just say that I don't think I explained that point about my thoughts on evil very well. What my thoughts are on that is that you have to be allowed to do evil or to do the wrong thing or to be bought or to be cheap or, you know, whatever it is, all these bad things, you have to be allowed to do them because the gods want to see who you are. And the gods, maybe the gods are all, all the stars in the sky, maybe, you know, whatever that concept of God is for you. But there is divine justice, there is natural justice, there is cosmic justice. And the point of being here, the game of life, is that all possibilities have to be open to you. From being wonderful and doing good all the way to doing really, really bad things. You have to be allowed to do all of them. Because as you choose, okay, I want to do this one, I want to do this one, I want to do this, I want to do that. You're showing, you're demonstrating who you are. And that is what this incarnation is. Okay, so... That's what we've come here to do. So those are my thoughts on evil. I hope I explained it well. I, I, I just rewatched the video quickly and I noticed that, oh, I didn't explain that very well at all. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I would love to answer them there. So thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe. It really helps me out a lot when you do that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.